In this video I will train the stable diffusion model with images of my cat. Then I will use this trained model together with stable diffusion to generate even more AI images inside GIMP. So this video will combine the most important elements from the previous videos into one compact workflow. But before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find everything about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the necessary links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps so you can skip any part of this video. If you like AI generated images, then you will definitely like the sponsor of this video. Thanks to Creative Fabrica for sponsoring this video. If you are looking for creative digital art and graphics, then you should definitely check out Creative Fabrica. It is one of the largest marketplaces for creators and designers with a library of over 6 million fonts, graphics and digital print-on-demand assets. Recently Creative Fabrica launched their first AI image generator called CF Spark. Using CF Spark you can create images that are 100% unique, you can download your own unique creations or publish them on the platform for paid use by other members and that way monetize your AI creations. You can try it out for free or with a monthly $9 subscription. With the subscription you get 1000 speed credits that allow you to jump to the top of the queue and get your AI images first without waiting in line. In addition to regular discounts and daily deals, they also have a contest where you can win store credits with your AI designs created in CF Spark. So if you are interested, you can check out the link in the upper right corner or down in the description and unleash your creativity today with Creative Fabrica. First we want to train the stable diffusion model and therefore we will use a Google Colab notebook. I am already inside Google Colab and I used the same one in the previous video, Fast Dream Booth, where I trained the model with images of myself. So if you're interested how to generate AI images of yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Since the last video this form changed a bit and I will walk you through it. First we need to connect to the Google Colab notebook, so go to connect. Alright, we are connected. Now make sure under view resources, change runtime type, that this setting is set to GPU. It's already set on my side and save that. Close the resources. And now let's go through the sections. First we want to connect to our Google Drive, so press run. You will need to permit access. If you don't trust this one, then of course don't do it. But I trust this one enough to continue, run anyway. And connect to Google Drive. Perfect, let's see where the drive is mounted. Go to files, one level up. And it's mounted under content, G drive, my drive. Here it is. Now let's set up the environment, run this cell. All right, done. Now the next step. This one will try to download the latest stable diffusion model. If this is the first time that you are training your stable diffusion model, then you will need to go to Hugging Face, create an account there. So just go to this link. This is the latest model at the time of recording. You will need to create an account here, accept the terms, and then under settings, down here, access tokens, you will be able to generate your token and then just copy it, go back to Google Colab, paste your token here and just run the cell. But if this is not the first time that you're training the model, then you probably already have one, like I do from the previous videos, then find your model inside Google Drive. I will use this one from the previous video, just right click on it, copy path and paste it here. And now it will train this model. So go to run, done. The next two sections are about the images that we want to train the model with. It says here that the images should be named with a unique identifier. And here is the example, you have the identifier and then the images are just named 1, 2 and so on. I want to train the model with images of my cat and I have the images on Google Drive. Here are the images on my Google Drive and this cute little bad boy that I call my own lives a happy life together with my parents. And now today I will give him a virtual life inside an AI environment. I gave my cat a unique identifier, Agile Cat Art. You see what I did there? And every image has the same name with a number at the end. Now back to Google Colab. We need to give this session a name. I will call it Agile Cat Art. We don't have any previous sessions. Do images contain human faces? No, it's just a cat. Now let's create the session, run the cell. The session was created here under sessions. Here it is. The next one. This one wants the folder with the images. In my Google Drive, this is the one. Now right click on the folder, copy path and paste it here. Run the cell. Next. As the name says, this is the training step. If you want, you can go with the defaults. Here it says that you should use number of images times 100 to get the training steps. In my case, I have 21 images, so this would be 2100 steps. 
we don't want to oversaturate the model, but I still want a bit more training steps. So instead of 2100, I will set it 2500. Seed is okay. For the text encoder training, it says it should be at least 10%. It also says if the percentage is low, the style will be better transferred. And the higher percentage means that the weight will be more on the instance. If we would have images from an artist, then we would probably want a lower percentage here to get the style. But since we have an instance, a cat, we want a higher percentage. 35 seems a bit high to me, so I will set this to 30. I don't want to go too low. Everything else should be okay as it is. And just start. Now this can take 30 or 40 minutes or so. Alright, finished. And now in the next step, we will try out the new model. Everything should be fine as it is. And just run the cell. Stable Diffusion is now running on this link here. And it uses the trained model, this here. So let's try it out. Click on the link. This is one of the Stable Diffusion web UIs. I want to generate agile cat art on a sandy beach looking at the sea. I will also check restore faces. Everything else should be fine. Let's try it out. Generate. All right. This is my cat. I would recognize him. Let's try a few more. Generate. Also a good one. And let's see the last one. Okay, now we finally have the sea back here. But this thing in the back here is weird. I'm not sure what that is. But I'm satisfied with the results. Generating images like that is nice and everything. But let's use this one inside GIMP where we can also edit the images. So I will close this one and also stop stable diffusion. The model is stored on my Google Drive. Here it is. So we are done with the training. We don't need this Google Colab notebook anymore. So we can just disconnect and delete runtime. Yes. And we can close the tab as well. Now let's use this trained model in GIMP. And therefore I will open a different Google Colab. This one here, GIMP Stable Diffusion, and this one works together with the GIMP Stable Diffusion plugin. In a previous video, I showed you how you can install this GIMP plugin, and I was going through this Google Colab page, and also showed you how you can use the plugin in GIMP. So if you are interested how to set this one up and how you can use it, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. In this video, I will not go through the whole page, and I already started the first four sections. But I will show you how you can use a custom model here. So we are at the section select and load model. And here go to show code. And now find your model on your Google Drive. Right click on it. Copy path. And paste it as the custom checkpoint path. Like that. And then for the model checkpoint. Delete the comment. And write custom. And now run the cell. And scroll down. Now here you can see the model that will be used. And now just start the server for the GIMP plugin. Perfect. Now leave this one running and copy this link. Copy. And now let's go over to GIMP. Here I am in GIMP. And now let's try to use the plugin with the trained Stable Diffusion model. For this demonstration, I will load a base image. And I generated this one with Stable Diffusion as well. And now I want to replace the head of this gentleman with the AI generated head of my cat. We will use the trained model with Stable Diffusion. And we need to guide Stable Diffusion somehow. So I will load an image of my cat. This one here. And I will take this layer and drag it onto the base image. And now I will turn the opacity way down so I can see through the layer. And then I will scale the cat layer somehow like that. And bring the head of my cat in position. This should be fine. Scale. Now I will bring the cat layer down. Set opacity to 100%. Then make the layer fit the image. Go to layer. Layer to image size. And now let's add a layer mask to the base layer. White is okay. Select the layer mask. And now I want a black color and a brush. And I will mask the face with the face of my cat. Now let's make a new layer from visible. And let's try to remove the background. I will use the lasso tool. It doesn't need to be perfect. I will take, for instance, this color and just paint over it with the bucket tool. We don't need the selection. And now just to make the background a bit more seamless, select the heal tool, control click, for instance, somewhere in the background and just tap over it. Let's fix this part here with the smudge tool. This looks good. I think Stable Diffusion will figure out what I want. So let's use the plugin now. Go to AI, Stable Image to Image. 
We used this plugin in the previous video, and here on the backend URL, we need to paste the link that we copied from Google Colab. I have it in my cheat sheet. For the prompt, I will use something similar that I used to generate this base image, so the one with the general. I will also copy it from my cheat sheet, and I want agile cat art. This is the identifier that we used for training, and with this, Stable Diffusion will know that I want to generate images of my cat, and I want my cat as a general. Now, in painting should be no, because we are not in painting. I will set in its strength to about 0 0.7. A higher value means that the image will look basically like this one. So 0.7 should be enough. I want that it gets creative a bit. And then prompt strength, I will turn up to about 15. Because I really want my cat to look like a general. And I also want that it keeps the style from the base image. Now for the steps, I will turn this up to 150. Because I want more quality here. And let's try it out. OK and generate. All right. I really like that one actually. So let's use this one. Drag the layer onto the original like that and drag it under the mask layer. We don't need the first one anymore. OK, now let's fix the mask layer a bit. Paintbrush. So I'm just trying to combine the generated image with the underlying image so that it is more seamless. All right, now again, new from visible. And I will again try to fix this background with the heal tool. Control click here and try to tap through this. Okay, looks good. And now I want to do a final high quality render. So again, go to AI, stable image to image. And this time I will set in its strength to 0.9 because I don't want to deviate too much from this one. And since I want a high quality image, I'm sure that 150 steps will not be enough. And there is a way to go more than 150. You just need to open your plugin file. I'm using Windows and my plugin file is in the user directory, app data, roaming, GIMP, the version and plugins. So here's the file. I will open it in Notepad. And now inside here, scroll down. You should see steps here and 150 is the maximum. So I will change 150 to 500 and save the file. Close it and then close this one and open it again. And now you can go beyond 150 and I will set the steps to 500. And again in its strength 2.9. Final render, OK and generate. All right, this is what we get. And I'm actually satisfied with this one. So again, take the layer, bring it to the original. OK, now just to compare where we started. So we started with this one, then this one and then this one. This one is definitely more styled than this one. Although I'm also satisfied with this one, but I like the eyes on this one better and the fur down here. So let's bring these elements to the other one. Bring this one down and let's mask this layer. Add white mask. Click on the mask layer and let's mask it with the brush. So let's bring the eyes in. Maybe some of this. All right. Let's see the difference. Disable layer mask and again enable. Yeah, I like that. It's more cartoonish. Let's compare this to the original. So this is the original and this is my cat. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like my content, if you think it's helpful, then please give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. It means a lot to me. It makes the channel grow. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.